Hello everyone, I greet you in the name of God Almighty. My name is Apostle Newton Silas and today we have a very interesting video to react to and this one says that interview with Lucifer. Okay, I believe that this is going to be a very interesting uh, video. I guess it's not going to be the real Lucifer just like the way we know but then maybe something to depict it. It's just an idiom to be able to depict who the Lucifer is and then some of the antics is using to deceive the children of god i believe that when we get down to the video we can be able to like learn some of the things that the enemy do to deceive children of god so that we can be able to desist from some of the things you understand that he put in our mind and make us to fall in his plans and then end up you understand and could end up you understand in eternal world hellfire with um, him so guys if today happens to be the first time of you taking out my channel don't forget to subscribe to my channel and follow me on my facebook and instagram and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and i'm going to check it out so guys before we get on to the video i'm a theologian and i make this video not to discredit anyone's religion this is basically for educational purposes and i believe that at the end of this video we all are going to learn from it so guys let's get out to this video and check this out Whoa, well, lucifer in the flesh do you know how many journalists would kill wait you probably do uh first i want to say thank you to agreeing to this interview because i know you are a very very busy person yes i usually like to fly under the radar but I figured, since I'm already on the campaign trail, why not? Okay. First, let's talk about your reign. Now, you've had a fairly long one. What would you attribute to your success and popularity? Oh, that's easy. Every generation is the same. I appeal to their lust and ego. I offer all the sex, wealth, and fame a person could want. Do as thou wilt has been my campaign slogan from the start. And my campaign platform hasn't changed either. I run on the same three issues every generation. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life. Okay, okay. When you say lust of the flesh, what exactly do you mean? Come on now, what do I mean? Isn't it obvious? I just use humans' own innate physical desires against them. And since sexual desire seems to be the most powerful, I usually run with that. Now, I didn't create sex, but I must say I've done a superb job at perverting it. Take pornography, for example. Well, you should know a lot about this one, Ivan. Weren't you addicted to porn? <coughs> um, this interview is about you, uh, not about me. Can we get back on subject? <clears throat> now, where was I? Oh, yeah. What I do is gradually get someone addicted to porn. And once Lust has had his full work and he and she can no longer restrain themselves, they usually look to act out their fantasies on someone. And sometimes that someone is a child. Now, if my plan plays out perfectly. That abused child will eventually turn to a life of promiscuity and perversion themselves, allowing me to continue my vicious cycle. And here's the kicker. Many of those abused girls end up right in the porn industry. Now, how's that for irony? Mm. The second thing you had mentioned, I believe, you said lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes. Can you elaborate? Humans are never satisfied. You always crave more. Bigger house, bigger car, more money, more power. The list goes on and on. I just take their natural ambitious desire, pervert it, and use it against them for their own destruction. My plan is to allow them to never be content. As long as I can keep them craving what others have, I can depend on them to argue, fight, even kill to get it. Humans are so easily tricked into jealousy. And you know what they say, jealousy is as cruel as the grave. Yes, I have heard that before. The last thing you had mentioned was, I believe, pride of life. Now, how does this fit into your campaign platform? 
Humans are always on a quest for knowledge. I check the first humans to seek carnal knowledge over godly wisdom, and it's worked like a charm every generation since. With more knowledge comes more pride, and you know pride is my specialty. And since humans don't like to keep God in their wisdom, I'm able to seduce them with all types of things to help puff up their ego. Lately, fame has been my biggest seller. Who doesn't like attention and feeling more important than the next person? And once I make them famous, I can really use them to promote my agenda. With their help, I've convinced half of the world to not only accept sin, but to celebrate it. Do you know what has been my most enjoyable pride campaign to date? No, what? Well, my gay pride campaign, of course. Not only do I get the chance to promote your own self-destruction, I get to use God's logo, the rainbow, to do it. Love is love, right? <laughs> my plan not only prevents you worthless humans from reproducing, it distorts the gender roles and allow me to bring all types of chaos and confusion upon your pathetic societies. This has been so successful, I've got men convinced they're women. And women convince their men, and some convince they are no gender at all. And I've got two more pride initiative campaigns I'd like to introduce in the near future. Mm. Really? I'm guessing you probably want me to ask you what they are, right? Well, first, it's abortion pride. Now, I think we can pull this off. Society is definitely ready for it. I've enlisted to help a Planned Parenthood to work with marketing and promotions. And all we'll have to do is silence the so-called abolitionists and pro-lifers because the rest of the church doesn't seem to care. And second is pedophilia pride. Now, society might not be ready for this one just yet, so we'll hold off. I need to desensitize them a little more before we introduce it. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Let's change gears for a minute and talk about policy. Some may consider your policies destructive, dangerous even, uh, what would be your response to that? What would you say to your detractors? All of my policies are aimed to do one of three things. Either steal, kill, or destroy. And if it's not doing one or all three of those things, then it's not in my agenda and I'm not promoting it. Okay, okay. I'm happy you said that. It seems as if you promote your agenda differently to different, to different ethnicities. Uh, if so, why? Of course. I'd be a fool not to. Take black people, for instance. As a people, they're super spiritual. So I can't really convince them that there is no God. What I have been able to do as of late is convince them that he's not the God of the Bible. Now, I've been real successful at promoting black consciousness and Islam in their communities. I'm so happy you mentioned black people. It seems as if we've been at the very top of your agenda for quite some time. Why is that? A few reasons. Black people helped me reach the masses. Now, as you know, I was over music in heaven. My beats were so dope, I got over a third of the angels to follow me. And once I got here to the earth, I needed artists and entertainers to help me promote my message here. Who better than black people? Black people possess all the natural rhythm and music ability that I need. And it's easy for me to influence them with money since so many of them grew up without it. Another reason I target black people is because they're strong mentally and physically. If black men were to ever find their identity in Christ, <laughs> I'd be in trouble. So I try my best to destroy the black family structure and keep black men away from his family and the church. Drugs and incarceration are a couple of my more popular means. Without the head of the household present, I can become the head and influence the children without too much resistance. So you mean to tell me that your policies are intentionally racist against black people? Racist? <laughs> this has got to be the best law I've ever come up with. Now, I can't believe that humans still believe they're different races. But to answer your question, yes. It has always been my policy to target and isolate a group of people. And out of all my strategies, this skin color thing has worked the best. I definitely want to keep white people and black people separated. 
as long as I can keep black people bitter and white people offended, I'm good. Hopefully black people will never forgive. That way I can continue to use them. Okay, what, my question is, what role, if any, does your administration play in this black on black crime epidemic? <laughs> Well, as great as my administration is, we can't take all the credit for this. Black people help us tremendously. By aborting so many of their babies, they allow us to bring death to their communities. As the Bible says, they sow the wind and they reap a whirlwind. Mm. When implementing all of these policies, do you ever face any resistance or pushback? And if so, from who? One group in particular try to oppose every policy I try to implement. I would be so much further along with my agenda if it wasn't for them. Really? So what group is that? Those pesky, born again, Jesus followers. They're a real thorn in my side. Every generation they come together and try to dismantle one of my signature policies. Now, I've convinced half of the world that Jesus didn't exist and the other half that he wasn't divine. But I can't seem to convince them. They seem hell-bent on telling everybody about him and spreading his message. And some of me believe he's coming to unseat me in this generation. <laughs> Crazy, huh? I'll tell you, those idiots are really messing with my legacy. So, Lucifer, how does that make you feel when... Uh us idiots say that Jesus possibly could be coming back in this generation to unseat you. Huh. Y'all been saying that for centuries. I just use it as motivation to get as much of our agenda pushed through and deceive as many people as possible before he returns. I think I've done pretty well. My record speaks for itself. About 150,000 people die each day and most of them don't know Jesus. 150,000 people. Whew. Well, you know what? This concludes our interview. Uh, I want to say thank you for an open, honest, pretty frank discussion with me. Uh, is there any last words you would like to leave with our viewing audience? Yes. I'd like to take this moment and give a special thank you to two groups of people. First, I want to say thank you to all my followers. You are the hands and feet of my administration and we could do nothing without you. Keep up the good work, spread my message. And second, I'd like to say thank you to the divided church. I love the way you argue and use your passions to fight amongst each other. Keep up the good work. There's really no rush to tell people about Jesus. You all have plenty of time. Hmm. Well, that's a very interesting video watching this um, interview. I know that all the person sitting down there, you understand, depicting, you understand, the uh, Lucifer is not actually, you understand, the Lucifer that we know, but he act, you understand, in the place of the Lucifer to tell some of the antics that the devil used against God's children. And then, therefore, just like, you understand, he rightly says, you understand, in John 10, 10, that the devil comes to what? To steal, to kill, and then to destroy it. But Jesus has come to what? To give us life that we may have it in abundance. Now, we have learned and listened to some of the antics that the devil used to destroy us. Of course, it will bring that um, strategy of um, divide and then conquer. That's one of the strategies is using and that is really working, you understand, on us. And that's when he was talking about, you understand, this issue of um, race, right? We could talk about, you understand, the white and then also the black race, which is something that is really affecting us, you understand, in our society nowadays. People tend to feel like they are very important than others, or should I say, or some are superior than others and then therefore all these things in a sense comes to our society and that's why even um, just last week you understand of course we saw what happened you understand between 
Vinicius Junior and then some of the Valencia fans you understand that happened in Spain we could see some of those things and you know, as the devil is using at that point in time maybe every black race will have this kind of hatred for a white person you see and then that black people will tend to look at the white people with this form of hatred all these things you understand happen are devil's you understand strategy because when you look at it at that point in time now we are divided the love that used to be between us you understand who will not be there and then it's not take off take out that unity because before we live as one and that is those are the some of the things that the devil does not like and therefore create all this division in between us and that's why you now see there happens to be this hatred and all that but then we just thank god for the football governing bodies for the support they show and then how they're able to condemn some of the cause spread and then all that so that to be able to make people understand that we are one now if you also look at one thing that you also mentioned was this gayism that we talk about and understand the rainbow color well i'm just very surprised how people you understand could decide that they are men and then they want to be women and then some women who says they want to be men and not that because of they want to do it by therefore inventing or doing something but then therefore they want to really practice this kind of things and then you could all bear with me that those are some of the things that happen in the times of lord and then therefore god end up what destroying the understand sodom and gomorrah these are like the same thing that is also coming back in understand in this very generation and we all understand what in understand the outcome of these things could turn us to and if you look at this in the same god servant um jude have already said this thing in his word when he says that what some of these things are creeping in into the place of worship and then therefore making us in a stand to make doctrines in a stand to accommodate these kind of things and then therefore at the end of the day all these things is going to what to destroy us all and that's why he also says in a stand same book of jude chapter 5 from verse 1 he says that the same jesus christ that saved the children of israelite from the hands of the egyptians end up destroying those who disbelieve now this is the kind of situation we are having now some of this policy some of this doctrine in a sense are now in our churches and that's why you see they now with some of those gays and all those things in the name of trying to accommodate everyone we all know you understand in the back of our mind that christianity is not about accommodating everybody but the devil in a sense will find a way of saying that look let's just love people for who they are and leave the rest to christ so that the grace in a sense that jesus christ have sacrificed himself at the cross of calvary will not cover everyone's of as far as you believe that grace will cover you but the truth about it is that these things in a sense are not true that grace can only save you from the original sin from Adam, but it will not in a sense save you from the sin you intentionally in a sense commit by yourself. And that's why Jesus Christ in a sense himself in a sense says that in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 5 from verse um, 20, he says that unless your righteousness exceed that of a Pharisee, you shall not make it to the kingdom of God. So have a look at in a sense some of those things, you realize that there's a lot of things that we need to do as the children of God and the enemy that is the devil or the Lucifer always bring some of these antics in a sense to bring division and to convince us and to make us to even forget about our primary responsibilities that's why we are here on this earth that's in the book of Mark it already says that what our responsibility is to go to spread the gospels to all creation right and he also went on in a sense in the next verse that to those in a sense who believe in a sense are baptized will be saved and those who disbelieve in a sense will be destroyed. At this point in time, some of us, our mind is already here on this very earthly um, position. And this earthly position, you understand, is vanity. And that's why Solomon says that the word vanity is what? Vanity, because all these things, you understand, we keep fighting one another for none of it can be able to like take us to heaven but then we get up we get on in a stand consume 
by some of those material things and we forget about you understand our maker and then therefore leading us in a sense to destruction i believe that as we listen to this video of course i believe that we must have learned few things from this and i pray that may this stick into us surprisingly i'm still these things do bothers me for me to see and understand people saying they are gay i was even reading in a sense some news and then last week and then i was seeing a man and a man that even the law of our society even accepted as the matter of fact since even places of worship are even accepting them then what now happens to the society and people are doing all these things one thing that makes me understand to be scared of some of the hadith of prophet uh, muhammad may peace be upon him when he says that a god will destroy the understand a nation if the number of the disbelievers in a sense supersede that of the believers at that point in time god can destroy them and we saw these things in understand happening to the people in the times of lord for instance sodom and gomorrah we also look at noah for instance when he supersede what happened they got destroyed and we pray because all these things are already taking over this world that's why it's very good for some of us to be closer to our maker Whenever you understand you have sinned against God, you go before Him, seek for forgiveness so that you can be able to like amend your ways, you understand, with Him so that if you are living this very earth, you can be able to make it to eternity. Else, otherwise, you just stand and condemn, which is not my prayer for you and me. Your thoughts and opinion are all welcome at the comment section. I know that a lot of you will have, you understand, something to say concerning this interview with the lucifer and i want you to drop it at the comment section let's all learn from one another i believe that when you do so you can be able to touch a life you can be able to touch life of someone you can be able to save someone you understand from some of the things you understand that was mentioned in the video so guys this is the end of my video if you like my reaction if you like share and subscribe and if you have any video you want me to react to don't forget to drop it at the comment section and I'm going to check it out. So guys, you remain blessed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye-bye.